Kara, stay with me. Hey, hey, breathe, breathe, breathe. Hey. Hey, what's up everybody? And welcome back to the channel. So today's video is a little bit different. So as you heard in that quick little intro clip there, oh, well, good morning. Good morning. You wanna say hi? Yeah, hi. So as you heard in that quick little intro clip there, something happened to Kira the other day. Oh. Don't worry, I'm not showing the video. Okay. So we had kind of an emergency. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is tell you a quick little bit about the story from my recollection and then play some clips and show you uh, and kind of talk about that so sorry I'm kind of I'm kind of freestyle on this one so yeah you can have it go, go for it okay so before we really jump into it I'm not gonna push the whole like subscribe thing too much because this is just this video is kind of heavy I just want to mention if you want to check out our other videos, check out our channel page. If you want to subscribe, drop a like, whatever, we appreciate that. Um, if you've had emergencies with your kids or scary moments out there with your kids, uh, feel free to drop those down in the comment section below. So let me tell you guys what happened from my perspective. So Kira and I were out at the Salt River and we had been out there 30, 40 minutes tops. It didn't feel all that hot to me um, and to say that Kira and I live outside is a massive understatement and as a single dad she has been on all of my adventures with me over the last 10 years so the heat wasn't really a red flag it had been the two days before but it wasn't that bad um, so anyway we had been out about 30 40 minutes and she said she had to go to the bathroom so we started walking towards the bathrooms and I was walking away from her. I was in front facing away and I was talking to you guys because uh, I was shooting a fishing video that day. And so I'm just talking to the GoPro on my chest and I hear Kira from behind me say, I can't hear anything. And I turn around to kind of sarcastically be like, I wasn't talking to you. Um, and before I can really process it, she says, I can't see anything. And she says, I'm walking weird. And she starts stumbling. And so I'm only a few feet away. So I start running to her. And as I get to her, she just kind of goes limp in my arms. And her eyes roll back. And so I lay her down. She starts seizing. So this part, this point, I'm freaking out. Kira's never had a seizure, has no history of seizures, has never had heat stroke, nothing. I call 911, the service is bad, I finally get them on the phone, I move her to the car, I crank up the air conditioning, um, I had done, uh, right before I moved her to the car, I had done a sternum rub, and she came back and she was talking to me, but she seemed kind of out of it. So I got her in the car with the air conditioning, I start making her drink water, um, I asked them to go ahead and just send the ambulance, because, um, you know, I didn't know what the hell was going on, and being somebody that works at a hospital, I wanted, the, I wanted her to be treated at my hospital, which was about 35, 40 minutes away, and I didn't want to just put her in the car and off we go without her being checked out. EMS shows up. Uh, they were fantastic. Shout out to Monroe City Ambulance, um, especially Russell. I didn't get his partner's name, I apologize, but Russell, um, if you see this or somebody from Monroe City, Missouri knows Russell, I can't thank you enough. Um, I really do appreciate the way you took care of my daughter. So they evaluate her, they think that she should be checked out, and they offer to transport her to the hospital where I work. So I follow them in the ambulance. You'll see me on video in a few minutes here, uh, talking to the camera while I was following the ambulance. I just, I, like, I needed something to do, so I started talking to the camera. She gets checked out. Long story short, she's fine. Her labs were fine, her CT was fine. She got some fluids and came right back to her happy, normal, sassy self no problem since then so that's my recollection of it adrenaline is a funny thing um, I have been a little bit of background on me with adrenaline I got 18 years in law enforcement I have been shot at I have been stabbed I have gone hand-to-hand -hand with messed up people I have gone hand-to-hand -hand 
with multiple people. I have been in a lot, I mean, even just in my professional life, but my personal life too, I have been in some sketchy, adrenaline cranking situations. And I would rate my ability to handle those kind of things at like a 10. This is not a 10. Um, and as you'll hear, it's, it, so let me kind of touch base on that. So I have the entire thing on video. The GoPro on my chest was running the whole time. And I made the decision not to show the video um, of what actually happened to Kira. And the reason for that is two part. One, I don't want her to ever see it. And two, I don't ever want to watch it again. It scared the hell out of me. What I am going to do is, after this intro clip, I'm going to play the audio of what happened. I'm going to show some video clips. When EMS arrives, I'm going to show me talking to the camera, and then I'm pretty much going to wrap it up this way. I'm not going to show you the actual incident of her collapse and all that stuff. What's interesting about reviewing the video is realizing that she never had a seizure. She It went exactly the way that I remember up until that point. She said she couldn't hear. She said she couldn't see. She started stumbling. She collapsed, I caught her, she hit the ground, I sternum rubbed her. Everything else is correct except the seizure. The violent shaking that I remember <clears throat> as a seizure in my brain on camera is me shaking her, trying to get a response. What I remember is she collapsed and seizes, I do a couple face taps, I'm talking to her, she's not coming back, I sternum rub her, she comes out of it. What really happened was I tapped her a couple times on the cheek. I shook her the entire time in panic and I sternum rubbed her and she came to. So what she did was she passed out. Passing out a seizure are two very different things, but adrenaline is, is a funny thing. It has a real effect on the way you, you process things in the moment. That's why you can have 10 people involved in say a car accident or a mass shooting and get 12 to 15 different stories from those 10 people. It's just after the moment, your brain starts piecing things together and uh, it doesn't always come through quite the way that it happened. I'm thankful that I was wrong and that she didn't have a seizure that she just passed out. I would actually prefer it this way than that for her to actually have a seizure. So I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna play the audio. Hey, 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 Kira, come here. Oh, shit. Hey. Kira, stay with me. Hey, hey, breathe, breathe, breathe. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Just no. sit, no, sit there. You can't hear me? No. Just relax. Hi, this is, my name's Stephen Bell, I'm out at the Salt River Dam at the Re-Rig Dam. I think my daughter's having heat stroke, I need an ambulance. Sorry, my signal's terrible here. I'm out at the Re-Rig Dam, the Salt River Dam, the recreation area. My hair's kind of coming back. My oh. daughter said she couldn't hear, said she couldn't see, then she passed out. She's still kind of lethargic, I want an ambulance, I think it might be heat stroke or something. I'm taking her to the car and cranking the air conditioning right now. It's a black Dodge Charger park, parked in the first parking section they come to when they come in and turn right. It's one of the only cars here. A couple things about that. So, obviously I'm panicking, but listening back, it, it's almost like, it's, it's, I was saying how adrenaline's funny. It's funny how my recollection um, moments after this phone call when the ambulance arrives is like hey she has seizure but listening to the actual 911 call I never said seizure at any point in there I said that she had heat stroke I never mentioned a seizure it's like excuse me it's like in that in that moment 
before you start to reflect back when you're just in it. The details are so crystal clear. 911 got the exact course of events right from my lips as they actually happened as confirmed on camera. And then in the five to ten minutes it takes the ambulance to arrive, your brain just like rebuilds it. Like you're replaying it, you're replaying it, you're replaying it. And as I'm replaying it, like I'm seeing that shaking and I'm like, oh my God, she had a seizure. And you know, in my mind, like 911 knows they had that she had a seizure. Like I, I told them because that's, you know, what you do. And it's just not how it happened. The other interesting thing there is after she comes back, she mentions that her hearing is coming back. It doesn't even register with me. Um, I think, I don't want to listen to it again, but I, I think even in that clip there, I had said, can you hear me? And she said, yes. <laughs> and it, it just didn't even register that she could, she could hear me. Like the panic is just, it's funny how the panic is off the chart in that moment, but the details to 911 are accurate. But minutes later, when you start to panic less and process, your brain fills in the gaps incorrectly. And it's just, it's just funny how adrenaline works. So what I'm going to do at this point is uh, play you some video that I shot with the GoPro while I was waiting on the ambulance. I'll show you the ambulance arrive. And then you'll notice... Uh, I. I cut off the camera once the ambulance starts talking to her because I, I don't want to include that part either. And then I will show you me talking to the camera on the way to the hospital. And then uh, Kira and I will wrap this up together uh, at the end. So let's jump into the other parts of this. Stay tuned. Getting her some water. I'm sorry, what was that? Kira, do you have any chest pain? Does your chest hurt? She says no. Can you see, can you hear? Does your head hurt? Okay. I mean, we've been out in the sun, so it feels pretty normal. Her heart doesn't feel like it's going too crazy. No, she looks pretty normal. I'm gonna close the door so you get all the cool air, okay? Y'all, so let me tell you about the scariest moment I've ever had as a parent to date. Kara had to use the bathroom, so we came up over the hill back there, and all of a sudden she said, I can't hear you, and I thought, she was just talking, because I was talking to the camera, but I was facing away from her, and I thought, so I kind of turned around, I was like, I wasn't talking to you, and she's like, no, like, like, I realized she wasn't answering me, and she said, Dad, I can't see, and I said, Kira, can you hear me, and she didn't answer me, and then she said, I can't see, and she, she's like, I'm walking weird, and she started stumbling. By the time I got to her, she was already just falling, going limp. Her eyes rolled back. She was shaking like she was having a seizure. And so I got her on the lawn. Uh, service out here is sketchy as hell, but I managed to get 911 on the phone. I gave her a sternum rub. She came back. She says she's okay now, but I got the ambulance coming out. This will be the end of our day. I just, I want the ambulance to assess her. You know, I work in a hospital, but I am not a medical professional. So we're just gonna wait on the ambulance. Hey, how you doing in there? Good. Yeah, you you don't look so hot. We're gonna get you checked out, okay? Are they just gonna check me? They're just gonna check you. Okay? It'll be okay. Just stay where you are. Thanks for coming. She's alert and stuff now, but when I called you, she very wasn't alert. Um, she turned and looked at me and said she couldn't hear me, 
She wasn't answering me. She said, hey, I'm walking weird. I can't see anything. And then she fell down and had a seizure. Okay. I sternum rubbed her. She came back. She's been in the AC and I've been giving her water. Okay. She had a seizure then? Yeah. I mean, her eyes rolled back. She started shaking. It wasn't, you know, I work at Blessing. It wasn't like bad, bad, but it was definitely a seizure. Okay. Freaked me the hell out, man. Okay. Hey. Kira. Yeah. Anything like that ever happened before? Never. Okay. And to say we spend a lot of time outside would be an understatement. Okay. y'all whole point of this video Kira's gonna outro with me wanna say hi hi <laughs> apparently the dogs are too so the whole point of this video go lay down Shelby stop go lay down take three it's, would you go lay down go. Go. stand by <laughs> <laughs> all right the whole point of this video is uh, Honestly, awareness. Something I said in that last clip following the ambulance. You know, they're not bulletproof. She's fine, just ignore her. The ki kids are not bulletproof. This has been my ride or die adventure buddy for 10 years now. And not that I ever really thought she was bulletproof, though she is pretty tough. Like, her being affected by the heat, never even on my radar. This kid has been out in temperatures way hotter than that for way longer. I mean, it was literally, according to the video, 42 minutes that we had been outside. And it wasn't even in the hottest part of the day. 42 minutes. She messed up my fishing trip. <gasps> He's being rude. He's being <laughs> rude right now. We're having a little more fun joking about it now that it's over. Um, what, did you, what do you think of that whole experience? I don't know. The worst part about it was the needle. <laughs> yeah, she was not a fan of the IV. So you think maybe you should be drinking more water? You think maybe you should be wearing the sun protective clothing that I got you like I wear? No, because it makes me hot. You think maybe you should be, we should be carrying like those cooling towels you dip in the ice water in the cooler? Yes. Yeah. And definitely stop making ice water and putting water in there. Okay, so what she's talking about there is I have a tendency uh, when we carry water in the cooler to carry frozen bottles of water and let them thaw. Um, maybe we'll just start carrying some regular bottles of water because she's blaming me for the water intake. She's saying they weren't thawing fast enough, which, fair, because we were only out there for 42 minutes. Something tells me you weren't drinking water the rest of the day either. I was trying to drink water, but it wouldn't come out because of that ice is blocking the water. So, some of the changes we're making in our household, you might want to consider in yours. Um, she's going to get a little bit of a lesson in hydration, and I'm going to do better about making sure she's doing it. 
we're gonna start carrying. We have cooling towels. Um, they're all brand new in packages in various totes, like my hunting totes, my camping totes, my kayaking totes. We've never carried them. Uh, we're gonna start carrying those so that we can dip them in lake water, uh, river water, cooler water, you know, whatever, so that she can drape those on her if she's feeling like she might be overheated. Um, she's gonna start wearing more of the SPF protection clothing, like you see in literally all of my videos where I'm out on the kayak. Most of my videos where I'm magnet fishing back. Oh, it's happening. You Dad, see, that makes you me see hot. me. It is cooler in that clothing than it is not in that clothing. Y'all about to see me scold this child. All right, I'm done with you. I don't need you anymore for the outro. I'm good now. Okay. I don't need your sass. She's gonna start wearing that clothing. So we're gonna take some different precautions. Um, this is just advisory to, to all you parents out there that like to adventure with your kids. And there's a nice mix watching this video. I know right now there's parents watching this video going, well, no shit. Like, you know, what were you thinking? Um, and there's parents like me who are like, man, it just, you've been doing it with them for so long and it's never affected them. And they've always just been fine. <clears throat> and their tolerance for the last 10 years might not be their tolerance today. And that was the sobering part for me. Because it, it's not that I didn't think about how heat affects kids and stuff. It's that I've got 10 years outside with this kid where it's never once been an issue. And on a day that wasn't even the hottest or the longest she's been out in, it was, it was a big deal. And it was a sobering moment. And it's definitely gonna change the way that we approach some of the outdoor stuff. So. I'm gonna wrap this video up. There's not a whole lot more to say other than thank God, you know, my kid is okay. Um, prayed pretty hard in that car following that ambulance. And shout out to all of my coworkers in the emergency department and the EMS and just everybody that helped take care of her today. Um, now looking back, it's definitely panic and maybe a little bit of overreaction. But my God, at the time, it doesn't feel like it. So I'm just thankful to all of you for helping her. Thank God that she's okay. And I hope that this video helps prevent some incidences like this for kids and parents in the future. So thanks for tuning in. As always, if you want to subscribe, we appreciate it. I love all of my followers. You guys make this truly worth doing. And we'll catch you on the next video. And it'll be something fun instead of something sad and scary and kind of sobering. So, peace.